Greetings, everyone. All right. Everyone's happy. Let's do this. My dear friend Shivagam, will you be okay to translate or should, should we shift to Shivani? Just tell us if we need to shift, all right? It seems that you're connected right now. Good. So everyone, I welcome you to this class. If um, I'm going to give a few simple announcements which are not critical for class. If, um, if you don't know what is emotional integration, okay? If you have never learned what is emotional integration, it's a personal growth method. Every personal growth method works. Um, well, if it works, some personal growth methods are called that, but they, they don't work. So what is a good personal growth method? It's something that requires you to feel inside your emotion and make a mental link, an intellectual understanding of your behavior regarding that emotion. Okay. So just freeing emotion will release pressure, but the bug in your head or in your ego is not resolved. Your ego is not your head, it's everything. Okay. Um, just saying, if you don't intellectually understand what is your behavior, your actions outside and how you are inside, you're not going to do proper personal growth. Good. So personal growth. Now I start talking, uh, talking slowly. For my translators to follow. Pay attention inside. So, the method of personal growth we practice in the Mahajriya Buddhist tradition, but also many other places that are non religious, it is called emotional integration because you start at the emotional level. Then we move on to mental integration and animal integration. What we used to call physical integration is actually animal integration because it's the animal, the genetic code. <clears throat> Typical about on class, I sometimes have to operate little things on the computer, which is good. That was for emotional integration, okay? There is a system of five elements in many, many spiritual paths. In many mystical systems, in many occult philosophy, I will here speak of two. There's the natural density of elements that gives an order of elements in nature. Earth is the heaviest substance, so it's the first element. And then water is the second heaviest, just a bit light. So water is the second element in that system. Then you have air, that's more subtle. And then fire, and then pure energy or void or spiritual. Okay. So that's a classification by density in nature. This is the most popular, but it is not the one we use. In our tradition, we consider this question. Before anything was manifested, or while everything was being manifested, What was the order if there was no earth or water yet? Okay. So we establish an order 
earth, fire, spirit, water, air. And I'll explain why. <clears throat> those who felt creation when it happened, those who experienced the origin of things, they have felt primordial principles. But there was no word to describe these states. So they compared it to the elements in nature, but for their property and their actions and not for their level of density. So <clears throat> earth is the first element because the first thing that happened, everything appeared. It's just the appearing of everything. Okay. So from the earth in nature, stuff appears. Life rises, plants, insects, and everything we need to live on comes from the earth. Later, we discovered that the earth has an energy field. So the first energy field is also the earth. So if we, if we let go of the natural representation and go back to the original manifestation from emptiness, from vacuity, everything appeared. Okay. So earth is used as a symbol of the first element, not for its density, but for the appearing of everything manifest. So that's why Earth is the first element in our system. <clears throat> After the first stuff appeared, it radiated hot plasma fire. So fire in nature is very subtle, but the action it does its properties is radiation. It emits light and heat and frequency and it spreads, it expands. So the second element in our system is fire because of the second level of events at the origin in creation phenomena, a radiation of all things. The third element is consciousness or spirit or space or heaven, simply because it can be many different things. The word akasha means space, like an area. Okay, so the third element is space, that's the accurate one, but akasha can also mean many different things, depending on the context, when we use Akasha in Sanskrit. Okay. So let's, let's go through a little thinking process. Why is space the third element? The easy answer is when the earth had everything appear and fire spread it spread into somewhere so space was not there before there was anything created there was no space space became because it was filled in the universe by the fire by the earth before it. okay so Instead of seeing the universe as <clears throat> an empty container that got filled, think that there is no container, but when stuff appeared, it took place. And that is Akasha, a space that is not contained in anything. You know where you are in the universe. 
you are probably in front of your computer watching this. You know your city, you know your planet, hopefully, <clears throat> that you're on. You know where you are in the universe, but where is the universe? It is not in something greater. We reach a point where there simply is no container. Okay. So why is the third element sometimes called consciousness or spirit? When you're conscious, you are here. And that takes a certain space. And that's why the appearing of consciousness is what made space happen. So consciousness is not inside a container. Consciousness is inside itself or it is swastya, self-contained. It has no container. It is the area it occupies. So that's why the third element is space and consciousness. And it's actually the same thing. There is no space per se. There is consciousness. And that manifested consciousness occupies an area. We will call that space. But if it was not filled with that consciousness, there would be no space. Between the atoms in the body, there's vacuity, emptiness. Between the stars, between the galaxies, there's vacuity. It is purely empty at the physical level, but it is still filled with consciousness in unmanifested state because it is consciousness that makes the universe occupy the space. Okay? It is empty in the manifested sense, but there's latent consciousness in there, inactive, everywhere. Okay, we call that universal consciousness. Very simple. Once we have all this plasma and matter in the universe, the next element is water. Water flows, okay. But what is important with the element of water is not the directional flow because it could just stand still. It's the cohesion, the fact that water on the surface has a resistance, surface tension. So water is the cohesion where all these individual items, objects, particles, are attracted to each other and collaborate and link physically at the electronic level. And on other level, they merge and they flow like a lava lamp. Boom, boom, okay, stuff move together. So the element water is cohesion. Stuff starting to be coherent and combine, okay? Therefore, Water is the coagulant and the dissolvent. If you want, the fourth element, water, is what we call in science, mechanics of fluids. Okay. The fifth element is air, where the wind blows. Air is convection. Now that there is cohesion, there can be systems of cohesion and the air convex. And those convections, if you are seeing them from outside, you see a convecting system. But if you're living it from inside a system, 
you only see a direction. You only see the direction of the stream from where you are within the convection, okay? So then you have in the air element, entropy, thermodynamics, and stuff like that, okay? Good. So, give me just a little second. All right. So, the five elements are in that order in our tradition, not just our tradition, um, all of Hinduism also use that. Earth, everything appears. Fire radiates light, heat, radiation. Fire is what affects and transforms. Space, because it took space, it's consciousness that occupies an area. Water, all of this become cohesive, it works together. And air, convection and movement. So that's the order of the five elements in our tradition for that reason. We will learn now, if we keep this in mind, we will learn how to tune in the five elements, not only in nature, but in supernature, from how it came from the origins. We will study that. <clears throat> Shivagam, if you can type the mantra in um, in the chat, Ritivi <clears throat> Boma. Two words to express earth and its properties, TV, boom, okay. TV is gardening soil. It is the earth as a substance. Boom is the planet, either the entire globe or when you're standing on earth and you feel it, okay? So TV boom is a combined aspect of everything earth. So we just contemplate TV boom, but our mind is on the phenomena of the origin. Everything happens. TV boom gives life, it produces stuff, it creates, it manifests, it gives density. So earth is seen as dense in a natural way, but it is actually the most subtle element that provides density. Because from vacuity, it became mass. Pretty V boom. Okay. And you tune in to the earth element as what comes out of nothing and just happens. And you got the first substance right out of vacuity. And something more subtle than the more subtle is the unmanifest. Vacuity. And from vacuity, just the appearing of mass. Okay. <clears throat> just feel it, pretty V Boma. Take a deep breath. Relax. And contemplate. 
the TV boom. Focus inside, wherever that means, but not just in the head, just everything inside, the TV boom. Some like to do only inside in the abdomen, some do the full body, doesn't matter. Pretty boom. And tune into the earth original aspect, the manifesting, the coming of density, the happening of new stuff. The producer of the first magnetic fields. Pretty boom. And while you do this for a few seconds, I will go run to get my mouth. You don't need them all immediately, but we will at one point. Okay, relax from the mantra, and we will shift into an attitude of emotional integration, okay? With the Visantara attitude. Can I just admit it? Okay, admit who I am, whatever that means, just admit the deep stuff hiding in my subconscious. Just go into the Visantara attitude, okay? And I'll guide you to which Visantara we do, okay? One conflict we have in our ego that is against the primordial concept of the earth. There's an arrogance inside us, okay? And to have the richest possible feeling of the earth, the experience to deeply incarnate the principle of the primordial earth. We have to consider that arrogance. Okay? That arrogance against the earth is what is against appearing or existing. Inside, sometimes we ask ourselves, what's the point of being here? If I die, there's no, nothing will change. Who cares about me? I am not loved by the others, so why should I still exist? Suicidal thoughts that happened far in the past, recently, or just today. Everything inside us reacting against existing limits our embracing of the primordial earth because the truth is we exist and if we exist then there is a reason or a purpose not a purpose given by god like a mission no not something like that something like there is a goal to creation and i am part of it so i should search for it but in my arrogance, instead of searching for the beauty of creation, I've been sometimes thinking, why do we even exist? And that became, it's, a, it's okay to ask it. It's a legitimate question. But emotionally, it becomes, I should not even exist. Or if I cease to exist, I will stop suffering. Existential crisis about existence. Go inside. If you're not in a crisis now or today, you have been in the past. It happened, probably. That's self-hatred. When self-hatred is allowed to take a space, even a small one, it will rise and it will affect us inside in an existential way. And we go through an existential crisis. Feel it, 
something inside is thinking, feeling, or saying, I should not exist. I don't want to exist. I want to disappear. Sometimes it is shame. Shame of what we've done. <gasps> oh no. And that that little wanting to hide, it causes us to want to not be. Then you have something against existing. All these different potentials for each their own reason about not being there accumulate into an existential crisis. You know, because of cohesion and these potentials mix and merge. And it becomes existential crisis. Take the time to sit in that. To feel it, to discover it. Even without a raw crisis with suicidal thoughts, even without a lot of negativity, there's potentials inside of maybe I should disappear. Maybe I'm not worth anything. Anything against existing is the ego's insult to the creator. It is completely acceptable to ask the question, why do we exist? Out of curiosity, of course. <clears throat> but in truth, there are emotions in there that are not just curious or philosophizing. They're actually considering ceasing to exist. It's the dark side of the ego. Find it. There, admit there has to be somewhere inside where I have a conflict and see it. Usually, these conflicts rise in moments of shame, of heartbreak, or when our pride is broken. And then we get very angry. And part of us says, cease existing, so you won't suffer that. Find it. It's subtle. It's a reflex of the ego to be against the five principles of the origin. These are different manifestations of arrogance. We all have it somewhere inside. When we pretend I don't have that problem, I enjoy existing. Yes, there's a great part of you that does enjoy existing. I agree. It is in a moment of crisis that what is against existing will rise. So maybe some of you just don't know yet that you have that arrogance, but it's still there. Just take the time to integrate, discover it. Give yourself a chance to see what you have inside against the earth. Against existing. There's a subtle existential crisis deep in everyone. Just relax in it. And if you can't find it, it's okay. Your next crisis of shame, pride, or fear will make you feel that. It will give you access to this part of you who doubts in your existence or would literally prefer not to. Okay. 
the more you take time to see the ego's arrogance against the creator, the more you get in touch with those feelings. And like any feeling, any passion, any force, force of power, the more you're conscious of it, the less it has power over you. And in this case, the more you have access to the creation principle. So heal your reaction against creation and the origin of all things. Embrace existence and also embrace what reacts to it so that you do a proper deep visantara sometimes. Embrace your existential crisis so that you can enjoy this powerful principle of the appearing of existence in the entire universe, one step at a time. <clears throat> Let's do a vocal breath. Ah. It's important to hear your own sound at least, even if you whisper. Let this out. Let's do it again. Ah. It soothes here the pressure after a visantara, after a good deep integration. Very good. Pretty boom. Contemplate the appearing of all things. And from inside, out of nowhere, out of vacuity, new magnetic field, new life, new resource, new energy. Pretty boom. Just say it in your mindset, in your attitude, out of vacuity, the appearing of all that is earth in its principles. Out of vacuity into the manifest world, Pritivibum, the earth element. Pritivibum. Now I encourage you to focus mainly in the abdomen, to have a more rich experience than spread all over the place. Pritivibum. <laughs> Good, very nice. Those who have a mala, you take it. Those who don't have a mala, don't go get it. It's okay. Or don't take it. Some of you don't even own one. Don't worry. It's a tool to count. It's not necessary. So those who don't have a mala, you simply chant at the same rhythm. And when everyone is done doing the mala, you stop. <laughs> okay, so that means you will have done the equivalent of one mala, uh, the necklace called the mala. Okay. And the rhythm is slow. Okay. So together, focus inside, the abdomen's better. If you're a great master, it naturally will be felt everywhere. But as a human, you, you do the initiation inside. All right. Pretty V boom, 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 pretty V boom. Pretty vipum, pretty vipum, pretty vipum. Pretty vipum, 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 
Pretty V boom, 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 pretty V boom. Pretty V boom, 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 pretty V boom. Pretty people, 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 Pretty Vipum, 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 Pretty Vipum. Some of you have a Buddhist mala with 108 beads. Some of you have a Hindu mala with 109. That's why some of you felt there was one left to do, and it's okay. Doesn't matter. Pretty V boom, inside, you focus, and you just relax in it. So that is an initiation on Priti Vibhum. And now you do a short contemplation like a Siddhi meditation. A Siddhi meditation, you repeat the word slowly inside, you whisper a bit, then it's mostly mental, and you focus in. Priti Vibhum. Priti Vibhum. You meditate on it and you allow the earth experience to just appear inside you. And it is wonderful. And it is simple, powerful, life, resource, energy field. Pretty people. We will take a few minutes, all right? We'll take five minutes and we'll come back for the fire initiation. See you in a few minutes. <laughs> 